Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerdeman, here as always with Tom Orr. Tom, how's it going? Well, Chief, you know we're all about breaking down the fourth wall on this podcast, and so let's just start with breaking down the fourth wall. This is the second time we're recording this episode, because the first time we started recording, immediately the internet failed, and we had to uh, scrap what we were doing and do it a completely different way. And I know why. It's because we were both being funny, and we had shots of Rutgers Stadium as our background on Zoom, <laughs> so that we, we, we brought the Rutgers into our house, and this is what happens. Total total I, failure, and we have to start all over. I didn't even think about that. That's correct. We shouldn't have uh, we shouldn't have done that. We shouldn't have flown so close to the dumpster, as uh, as the saying goes. Uh, so, Tom, today we were planning to uh, have a show about the the release of the Big Ten schedule, which of course we did not get, or at least <laughs> I say that, and it's probably being released right now as we are recording. The Tuesday afternoon at 3.48 p.m. But instead, Tom, we uh, got to talk to the Ohio State captains today. We learned who the captains were. We got to hear from Ryan Day. So it was a full hour of hearing from Ohio State players and a coach. And it has been, uh, did we talk to anybody in June or July? Uh, maybe, Maybe a little bit in June? I think we talked to Gene Smith at some point, like in the last month, maybe, but I don't think we've talked to either Ryan Day or players since players arrived back on campus, and that was the first week of June. So, yeah, it has it has been a minute for sure, and it was an absolute delight to have actual, some football actual conversation. Uh, it wasn't all football, obviously there's a lot, a lot to talk about with all the other stuff going on in the world, but, you know, actual... Actual content, actual football conversations with football players. It was like, wow, this is almost like we're sports media members covering a football team. That was that was refreshing and new. Yeah, nothing will make you enjoy your job more than being able to actually do it after so much time <laughs> of not doing it. So it was good. Ohio State named seven captains by vote this year. Uh, let's just run down. Justin Fields, Wyatt Davis, Josh Myers, Jonathan Cooper, Tuff Borland, Justin Hilliard, and Sean Wade. Three on offense, four on defense, and Tuff Borland now joins JT Barrett as Ohio State's only three-time captain, which is rare air. Uh, so congratulations to him. He uh, said... And we'll talk more about the defense in, I think, tomorrow's episode. This one will be mostly offense just because there, there's so much ground to cover and we don't want to overwhelm you. So, uh, But it was, like Tuff said, it's it's nice to be in that same mention as JT Barrett. It is kind of funny, Tom, to me that two guys who have received so much criticism have re- received the most accolades from their own teammates. Sometimes, every once in a while, I get the sensation that people who are inside the walls of the Woody Hayes Athletic Center may know more about certain things than people on Twitter.com. That is that is a thought that I've had once or twice before, and it, it occurred to me again today that yes, that was that was a very interesting uh, a very interesting coincidence that those two guys who have been absolutely buried at times on Twitter.com. Uh, both have been also respected enough by their teammates to get singled out for something that literally no one else in the history of Ohio State football has. So draw draw whatever conclusions you want from that. Good job. Good effort. Only two players ever. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's good for them. Good for everybody. As we said on the, the previous show, that got deleted because of somebody's internet connection. We don't need to talk about or say whose. We don't need to accuse anybody of anything. But I, we, we're both very happy for Justin Hilliard. And yeah, yeah, media, you're, you're supposed to be ambivalent and, and whatever, but you're also human. And you've seen so much struggle from Justin Hilliard to, you know, missing his first two years to, uh, due to biceps injuries and then playing for two years and then thinking like last year was going to be a pretty good year for him and then losing him in the spring. And he overcame that. And now, Six years in, 
finally to be named a captain, the former five-star linebacker who has just, you know, wanted to live up to that billing and has been in a, a loaded depth chart and has been a great contributor on special teams and now is finally a captain. And when you look at this list of seven names, I'm not sure anybody will appreciate it as much as Justin Hilliard because nobody has, I'd say, been through as much as he has. Well, he has been through enough that he even joked when we talked to him that he, he, you know, he really has gone through a lot during his five or maybe eight years at Ohio State. And I mean, I think it feels probably he was such a high profile recruit when he first committed that, I mean, he feels like he's been in the lives of Ohio State fans since about the time of the Model T. Like, yeah, was he on one of those Greg Fry teams in the early 90s? Like, maybe. I don't know. I'd have to go back and check the rosters. He he is someone who has just – he's gone through so much. He's had so many injuries, and it's not like, oh, it's the same injury every time. It's just, oh, it's an arm injury this time. Oh, it's a leg injury this time. He went down during spring ball last year, and we saw him getting carted off with an Achilles injury, and it was just like, that poor kid cannot catch a break. And, you know, knock on wood, but so far he stayed healthy this year. He has been in, he's put himself in a position where he's going to be a contributor this year. And he, he's just, he's someone who has just done it the right way the whole time in his career. He's not someone you ever heard about as a malcontent. He's not someone you ever heard about as someone who was complaining about, you know, this, this poor me and, and wallowing and because, and, you know, he, he would absolutely have earned the right to do that if, uh, you know, you you couldn't really blame him if he did, but he's just he's just kind of done things the right way his whole career. He's a, he comes across as a very impressive kid, and you know, good for him to for sticking it out and really, you know, really pay, you know, seeing it through. He reminds me a little bit of uh, C.J. Saunders, who was a captain last year, who you know you you hadn't seen a ton from him on the field, but he had you know C.J. Saunders went through a whole bunch to be an Ohio State football player, and you know, made that happen. He is someone who is not on the list of captains this year because uh, Ryan Day told us on Tuesday he is CJ Saunders uh, appeal for a sixth year was rejected by the NCAA. So, you know, he will not get a chance to be a two time captain, but he's going to stay on the staff and, you know, in some form, whether it's as uh, some kind of a quality control coach or a grad assistant or something, but, you know, he's going to, he'll be around the program a little bit, but yeah, that's a, uh, you know, guy, people like C.J. Saunders, people like Jonathan Cooper, people like Justin Hilliard. Yeah, it's it's hard to uh, it's hard to not feel pretty pretty good for them about you know getting reaching this level within the Ohio State football program. Yeah, and he mentioned like the this these six years, five years have have been the best of his life. And I'm th- thinking like I wonder, probably no linebacker linebacker in Ohio State history has ever played with as many good defensive ends as Justin Hilliard, because he comes in and he's playing with Joey Bosa. And then there's Sam Hubbard and Jalen Holmes and Tyquan Lewis and Nick Bosa and Chase Young. And now he'll play with two years with uh, Zach Harrison. And, and, you know, you got Tyreek Smith in there as well. And Jonathan Cooper's. It's just, um, that's, that's a lot of guys. I'm, I'm just going to assume and, and uh, I'll declare him, the linebacker in Ohio State history who has played with more great defensive ends than anybody else. And I defy anybody to prove me wrong or try to come up with some other contender. That's fine. But I, I'm feeling pretty good about my uh, my assertion there. What do you think? You know, if he can just get one more year, they've got, you know, Jack Sawyer <laughs> coming in next year. It could, I mean, could really add to that total. It's, it's, it's I mean... Based on his career so far, tell me I'm wrong. You can't. Because <laughs> if you think about it, like, could you imagine going from Joey Bosa to Jack Sawyer? That's like some FDR level stuff where you just <laughs> you just span all kinds of eras. Like, I, there's only been like you know five coaches in Ohio State for the last seventy years, and he's been coached by four of them or something like that. <laughs> um, but you know that's. That's Justin Hilliard, so congrats to him. The The offensive guy is Justin Fields. Uh, he said that he felt like he was able – he could have been a captain last year. He felt 
that much of a leader. And obviously we saw that leadership grow, but um, I think anytime you are the quarterback and you are named captain, as long as you're eligible, because as, as Justin Fields said, he wasn't eligible to be a captain last year as an underclassman. But anytime you are eligible to be a captain and you are the quarterback and you are not the captain, people are wondering, hey, why aren't you a captain? What is it about you? And they begin to analyze your faults. And like, are you, they just assume like, well, clearly you're not a leader. You don't take things seriously enough. You don't, and there's some things your teammates don't like you. And I still get a little bent when the coaches like Mark D'Antonio had, he said it was, it was kind of cook up to fail, I believe, because they had what three captains that year and they didn't, and, and Connor Cook was not elected as a captain. And then it just becomes this story and it's, it would have been so easy to avoid it. And I'm not saying that's what Ryan did. Ryan Day did here. This is a team vote and Justin Fields earned that captaincy, but it's just a lot easier for your quarterback in terms of facing criticism or facing, facing questions. If, if he's a captain, sure. It's also up to them to earn that captaincy, but uh, the fact that he doesn't have to answer questions about why aren't you a captain, I think that's a very good thing for any quarterback and and also for Justin Fields. It's just one little potential distraction that they just don't have to deal with this year. And the interesting thing is he's the first quarterback to be a captain at Ohio State since JT Barrett in 2019. I mean, Fields told us that uh, Ryan Day had a rule that underclassmen could not be captains, so therefore Justin Fields was not a captain last year. And Justin Fields, for all intents and purposes, acted like a captain all year and was a leader on the team like a captain would be. And, you know, I, I don't know who would have been a bigger leader on that offense last year outside of him. So he's he was certainly someone who was probably functionally a captain last year, if not in name. Year before that, Dwayne Haskins comes in, first-year starter. He was not a captain. He was a redshirt uh, sophomore. And, you know, that it, it is something that people kind of will raise an eyebrow at and, you know, well, this is this is a leadership position. Why are you not the why are you not voted as a leader by your teammates? But, yeah, not not an issue this year. And, you know, that was something where guys talked about what made Justin Fields a leader this year. And he said um, Josh Meyer said Fields is very approachable for younger players like, you know, you, you kind of have the the aura about you of the the guy who's, you know, much more important than you, a much bigger deal than you. And, you know, don't don't bother him with your your petty little freshman nonsense. Justin Fields, apparently, according to Josh Myers, is just a very, very approachable guy. He said that's a very big deal for the guys in the program and something that's going to make him a great captain. So, yeah, that's I, I don't think uh, Justin Fields got his. Uh, got his captaincy sort of by default or just, you know, because Ryan Day was trying to avoid a media story. If if that's what you're suggesting, Tony, and it's pretty irresponsible if you are. <laughs> I like the, the approachability thing because that's something that I've always done with interns and, and anybody can come to me. And, and, I, and I became that way after watching interns try to interact with you where the, your whole rule about no eye contact, uh, no direct <laughs> communication, it's always rubbed me the wrong way. Like, mm -hmm. I, like who, do, who do you think you are to be treating people this way? Sure, they're just dumb college kids, but they're still people, Tom. Mm. Are they, though? Are they? <laughs> I mean, listen, you have, you have your punch card. You have to bring me 15 baskets of popcorn and 15 cups of, of soda in the press box before you can make eye contact. And I will punch your card. Slide the card over to me on the t on the table in the press box. I will punch the card each time you do it, and once you fill up your card, then you can make eye contact. These are these are rules. We live in a society, Tony, with rules. Is this is this too much to ask? You know, I'm imagining. I and I I tweeted about the the wall of candy at at Jerry World the other day, and now I'm imagining like if we had that in Ohio Stadium, what your what that punch card would look like, and if somebody brought you back three Reese's cups and two Kit Kats and how you would just like smack them in the face because it's supposed to be three Kit Kats and two Reese's cups. <laughs> and if you ever do it again, I'll have you killed. Uh, I mean, I, now, now I, now I want the wall of candy more than ever. I love the fact that we have actual news to talk about for the first time in like <laughs> three months and we've completely derailed things. Anyway, so Justin Fields, 
Uh, right. He was Back asked, to Justin he was, Fields. <laughs> he was asked about uh, Minnesota wide, uh, wide receiver Rashad Bateman, who opted out for the 2020 season. That came out on Tuesday morning, I believe. And, you know, I think I think that's a very natural question to ask. You know, hey, if this guy who's, you know, perceived as a top first or second round pick next year is opting out, you know, that that's a natural question to ask Justin Fields. That's a natural question to ask Wyatt Davis or Sean Wade. Um, Fields said he, he the quote was, I can see where those guys are coming from, but I haven't really thought of it. And, you know, he, he talked about the fact that He's just, he's a competitor playing with his teammates is what he's cherishing the most. And he's also said, I think he's coming from a little bit of a different background. He said, you know, some guys are coming from a background where, you know, the, coming from a background of just, just straight up poverty. And, you know, I don't know if that's Rashad Bateman's situation, but, you know, guy, guys are in, in different spots. And he feels said that his family has, I think, been a little bit more comfortable than some other, other families have. And that can sort of change the calculus there where if, if he doesn't, you know, if something happens and he doesn't get the, you know, every last million dollars he can get from the NFL, then, you know, that can be a life-changing thing for some families. And I think for Fields, maybe he's, it's a slightly less of a concern. And, you know, I would, I would guess there's a decent chance he's got an insurance policy for this year and all of that. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I think that I, I came away from that, you know, I think there's, there's been a lot of questions about, you know, will guys drop out, will guys opt out? And, you know, for, for a team that is got its eyes, you know, it's got its sights set on the national championship and has, you know, has the firepower to get there. I think that's probably an easier decision to stick it out and play than it would be for a team that's like, you know, I mean, no disrespect to Minnesota, but Minnesota is probably not a national championship team this year. Minnesota had a great season last year, won a New Year's Day bowl game, but beating Auburn in the Capital One Bowl is not the same as winning the national championship. So, you know, there's there's a lot of things in that decision that that go into that, but it sounds like Justin Fields is not thinking about opting out this year, which that's I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's good news for Ohio State. Perhaps, you know, I would like to see C.J. Stroud and Jack Miller see what they could do in this offense, um, and not see it held back by what Justin Fields can't do, but we'll eventually get there. Sean Wade, I think, was the only other player asked directly, "Are you have you thought about opting out?" And he said, "No, there's." No thought about that right now. Everybody's just focused on the season. And even when people, players were asked, like, well, do you think there's going to be a season? They're all like, yeah, that's, that's what we're, <laughs> it's kind of why we're working. They, we're just staying positive and focused on that. And you know, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't, but they can't do anything about that. What they can do is control. And I think, I think Justin Hilliard may have said, like, we can control the coronavirus in the building and like within ourselves. I thought uh, they are taking this so seriously as an entire team and the captains are taking it seriously and um, mentioning like you, you had to get the freshmen in line that you can't be just a typical college kid this year. And Tom, we've both seen some, some pictures that <laughs> immediately jumped to mind when they're talking about wrangling freshmen up this year and making sure that they stay in line and, and don't, there's only so much hanging out with the student body that you can do. And it, that's even in classes as well, where you, you've got to take it seriously. And it, if it's almost like if you get sick, it's on you because everybody at Ohio state, the coaches, the, the staff, the trainers, everybody is doing their part to make sure you don't get sick. And if you get sick, it's, it's almost like it's your fault. It, it, the maybe Josh Myers and, and like Justin Hilliard and these guys need to draw up a Buckeye waiver, a Buckeye pledge and be like, if you do this, it's your fault. That way it doesn't come from the university, even though these guys are saying exactly what the university wants them to say. Basically, like you have the power to be as to, to stay out of danger. Basically, you have that power. And, and if you don't use that power, then you're not taking this as seriously as you need to and as seriously as everybody else is. And these are also learning moments for the, the captains to get the younger guys in line. And it's, the level of seriousness that these guys are taking it for just a game is pretty impressive. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot on the line for these guys this year. I mean, I, I think everyone just looks at the, you know, Hey, they played 14 games. That's well, 14 Saturdays. That's a lot of hard work. It's like, well, yeah, that's actually the, <laughs> I mean, literally the tip of the iceberg with this. This is something these guys have are, you know, 
some random Tuesday morning in late January, while you are snuggled warm in your bed, these guys are flipping truck tires or doing whatever in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center at 530 in the morning. That is just that's just what they do. And that's, a you know, that's in January. And then and then you go through spring ball and then you go through summer conditioning and, and works at workouts and then you go through fall camp and then you do your practices in the fall and then you play your games. And there's just there's so much that goes into this. And, and this is something these guys you do not get to be an Ohio State football player by accident. You have to you have to go as hard as you can and be a freakish athlete for quite a while before you get to college. This is this is I think in a lot of cases a, a big chunk of these guys' identities and these guys' lives and it has been for a long time. So, yeah, of course they're taking it real seriously. And you know, the, the tricky thing about this is you have, you know, the, it doesn't take 17 guys going out to the club to create an issue. It takes one or two guys. And I, you know, from the very consistent message that we got from guys on Tuesday was, you know, they're, they're not worried about their program. They're not worried about their guys. They're, you know, they, they, I think the concern is, okay, sometimes, sometimes we may have to play Rutgers and you've, you know, you've seen an outbreak on the Rutgers team and let's be real candid here. The Rutgers team is not playing for the same stakes that the Ohio state team is this year. And, So, you know, are the Rutgers players going to have the same dedication to staying in the facility? Do they have the same resources that Ohio State has? Mm, Probably not. So that's that's that sounded like, you know, and they did not say none of them said the word Rutgers out loud. But I think everyone on the call knew who they were talking about. You know, there, there are programs that are taking this very seriously and doing things as as cautiously and carefully as they possibly can to keep their keep everyone safe and. You know, players are behaving responsibly and doing everything they need to to get a season in. And the problem with football is then you have to play someone else. And there are probably teams on that Big Ten schedule who you would feel pretty confident that, you know, I, I bet Michigan's taking things pretty seriously. I bet Penn State's taking things pretty seriously. But, you know, Illinois, Rutgers, Maryland, like, yeah, maybe. I mean, sure. You you, you have you have programs that are renowned for being disciplined programs you have programs who are, who are renowned for not being disciplined programs, and that's something that could manifest itself in kind of different ways this fall. Yeah, it's not like Sparty No doesn't come about because they do everything the correct way. You know, uh, there, there's there's reasons for the reputations that some programs have, and I'm not saying I'm not saying Michigan State is a bed of coronavirus. I'm just saying, for example, or uh, here's an example. Or like Michigan State is an example of this. I'm not saying they are like, you know, just ridden with coronavirus. I'm saying there's a reason that players might have some concern. And in fact, Josh Myers talking about Ohio State, you know, the coronavirus at Ohio State said, I'm not concerned. And what other players, and I think maybe Justin Fields said as well, is like, you're more concerned about everybody else because they see what's going on at Ohio State. And that's natural because you don't see what's going on everywhere else. And one of the things we do know about Ohio State is they kind of go the extra mile with just about everything because they have the funds to do that. But is everybody else – like what is the extra mile for another school? It's probably not – like the mileage is different as your mileage may vary. The mileage around the Big Ten probably varies and I – I forget which player said it, but like they would like it if there were universal, like uniform rules that everybody had to go by. That would give them uh, more of a sense of uh, surety. But it's not like they're worried or scared. Like they all want to play and they feel like they will be able to play and they'll be able to get this thing done. One of the things that jo- Josh Meyer said that I really liked is that he, he, he was mentioning. People are allowed to go out and do things. They're allowed to go out to bars during this pandemic. They're allowed to go to restaurants. They're allowed to go shopping. They're allowed to go pretty much wherever they want. And he's he says, like, as college football players, we should be able to choose to play college football. We should be allowed to play college football. And it's striking when you have so many people arguing for the players' rights to not play. Here's a player arguing for their rights to play, which – that's something I've been I've been talking about in in the past where like players want to play and I always go back to Josh Myers from the last time we talked to him like he said he would sign any waiver so my 
the way I view players is, is the way I view the, the way I view Josh Myers is how I, I view every player who wants to play. Like they will do whatever is necessary within reason. They all want to be safe and they're doing that at Iowa State. But when you're talking about players' rights, don't forget about the players who want to play and the possibility that you're, you know, you're, you're taking that right away from them. Just as you don't like the fact that now you can't stay at the bar till you know, past 10, the college football players aren't going to like having college football taken away from them. You know, that's why they are in college. This is, is it a privilege? Is it a right? Right now, everything seems like a privilege um, that we're allowed to do, but this is something that they feel that, or at least Josh Myers, and I, I know he's speaking for others. He's not alone. Like they, he's voicing his 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 desire to play this year. And while you've got players in the Pac-12 talking about sitting out, he's this is a guy talking about I want to play. We have the right to play. Why can't we play? Well, and it's not just. I mean, I think there's the initial response to that would be, well, yes, of course, these are you know 21 year old guys who are full of much more bravado than they are common sense. But they were a couple of them were asked about like, what, what do your parents think about this? Cause you know, your, your parents are more in their forties or fifties at that point and probably have a little bit of a different perspective on things. And you know, Wyatt Davis says his parents want a season to happen. He said they felt very good about how Ohio state is handling things. They're getting twi- tested twice a week, wearing masks in a facility. Justin Fields said his parents left it up to him. He said they trusted him to make the best decision for himself and said, you know, players feel safe at Ohio State with resuming training camp and workouts. And then, uh, you know, Josh Meyer said his parents are trusting him to do the right thing, you know, just do the right thing. And he said it's sort of weird, but he worries more about them than they do about him. So, you know, I think I think that Ohio State has done a pretty good job of putting protocols in place to keep people as safe as they possibly can. And there is there is nowhere, unless you're going to move out to the wilderness and have no one around you for the next two years, there is nowhere you are going to be 100% safe. So the the deal is just keep yourself as safe as you can, and it sounds, sounds like what Ohio State's doing. And some of the players have also mentioned the transparency, which has helped with the, the parents. I mean, they're all involved in this and what Ohio State is doing. So it, it's... There, there shouldn't be like all of the concerns that the parents are having. Ohio State is addressing them. They may not be. There's, I'm sure there's still concern, and but they're not ignoring those concerns. Like Ohio State is ignoring those concerns. I had a talking to a player of um, the father of a player recently, and he's he's like, I, I just, I just want to see my son out there crushing dudes, and it's like that's that's how a lot of play, parents are right now. They just they love watching their sons play. Because they know how much it, you know, fun it is for their sons, and it's just it's fun for everybody. So they're they're hoping that it can ha- happen. Obviously, Wyatt Davis, another his parents want want the season to happen. Uh, it was interesting because players were asking, you know, how how good, you know, how much shape are you in? And he said he he feels like where he is now is where he would have been last year. Or like where the quote was, I feel like I'm where I'm always at during this time. And that's because when everybody was off on their own, he took it very, very seriously. And Ryan Day said at the time, the teams that take this seriously, this is an opportunity to gain an advantage over the teams and the programs and the players that don't. And he took it seriously. And, and when they got back to campus, you know, that you pick up right where they left off. And Josh Myers mentioned that when, when he was home quarantining, the, he had to watch what he was eating because even though he's going to work out hard, he knows he can't match Coach Mick's intensity. So they all, they all, the from the players we've talked to, Tom, all seven of them, they are taking the they took that seriously. The quarantine, the the workouts, and and um, this is a pretty focused team, and it was it was good to have them back talking again and talking about national title hopes and. Oh, Tom, did, were they talking – did they make any mention about about Michigan? Uh, yes, they were asked uh, – several guys were asked, you know, hey, you know, this may be an unusual se- a season. And, you know, the Ohio State-Michigan game is obviously a very important tradition here. It's always the end of the season. 
and you know w- will that be will that be weird or to be okay with you if they move that game up and uh yeah there was there was uh R- Josh Meyer said right now I'm more concerned about playing them all in general I would love for it to be the last game of the season but accepting the situation as is and being ready to play any day I mean that's just it was very much just um you know w- whenever wherever basically uh, the other guys who talked about it, it was a little, it got a little spicy and that is something that really kind of, I think probably everyone on that call went, huh? When, when they said this, cause both Wyatt Davis and Justin Field said they want to beat the brakes off of Michigan. Now, of course they want to beat the brakes off of Michigan. They want to beat the brakes off of Michigan every year. And for the last few years, they've been extremely, extremely competent in that department, but they don't normally say it. So that, uh, you know, th- th- that is something that sort of, of, of all the stuff you got, a, I think we got a lot of sort of expected answers and a lot of, uh, a lot of things that were like, yep, yeah, mm-hmm, that's, that's what I would have, I would have expected you to say. That's how I expect they would have expected them to handle it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That was something that, uh, I, I, am I, am I wrong? Did, did that, that, that seemed very out of character for an Ohio State football team to be talking like that before. Uh, before a season about Michigan. Well, the funny thing is, it's like these are the captains. These are, these are the guys. Part of the reason you put them in front of the the microphone is because they're not going to say this stuff. And it's like, well, now you've just eliminated the guys who will be talking during uh, Big Ten media days, assuming there are media days. But yeah, uh, of course, everybody thinks it. That's why they train every day for it. But to then say it, to me, that's a reflection of the head coach. And players are a reflection of their head coach. And this was something that the fact that you had two players say it and yeah, every, they're all going to say like, yeah, I'll play them any day. And it doesn't matter. You know, it could be wherever. Just, I, I just want to play that game. Everybody wants to play that game, but to have Wyatt Davis and Justin Fields both come out and say they want to beat the brakes off of Michigan, something clearly happened. And, um, you know, for subscribers, at the Buckeye Scoop on the Ask the Insiders board, there was um, a mention from Nevada Buck that there is some sort of possible dust up between Ryan Day and, and Jim Harbaugh in a, uh, a conference wide Zoom call. So maybe, maybe that had something to do with the attitude the players took today, or maybe that gave them a little bit of more of an edge to speak their mind. I would imagine we will never hear them say that again after saying it today. But I'm all for uh, players speaking your mind, which is great every time. And uh, if, if you want to say that about Michigan, just being truthful, being truthful about your rival. I don't think there's ever a, a wrong time to do that. Fans might disagree because like how often does that come back to bite you? Maybe, maybe pretty often, but if you're going to back it up, yeah, I mean that's that's the thing. Can you back it up? Because if you back it up, then you're a legend. Then you're Jim Harbaugh guaranteeing a win over Ohio State in 1986 and doing it. And if you don't back it up, then you're Karan Higdon in 2018. And well, that didn't work out great. So yeah, it it is really just a matter of can you back it up on the field? And I think in general, college coaches are probably would prefer that players let their play on the field do the talking, but yeah, those are the guys who are voted captains. The guys who are made available to us for media availabilities are the guys who they feel they can trust to go out there and not say anything too scandalous, not say anything too uh, inflammatory. So, yeah, for for that to uh, for that to have been something that two different guys said is pretty. That was that that really kind of jumped jumped out to me as a, huh, that is interesting. And, you know, not, I think going back a few shows, I think both of us have basically said, you know, as long as there's an Ohio State Michigan game this season, if it's in September, fine. If it's in October, fine. If it's in November, fine. Like as long as there is an Ohio State Michigan game this season, great. Sign me up right now. And I got to tell you, I don't feel less like that after uh, after the the news of the day and the uh, interviews today. I, I don't. I, are you? I mean, seems seems like that might be kind of fun this year if uh, if it happens. 
Yeah, no, my uh, anticipation has not been diminished by anything that happened today. So that was that was a fun call. It was good to get in touch with everybody again. Tom, anything else before we wrap up the offense? And like I said, we'll we'll get into the defense tomorrow. Anything else from Justin Fields or Wyatt Davis or Josh Myers or even Ryan Day? I, I think that's a good uh, – that's probably a good stopping point. Although I, I should mention – it is kind of silly that C.J. Saunders didn't get a sixth year. I mean, that was he who was injured all year last year. That was uh, that, that's probably the one the NCAA could have approved, and it would not have been a uh, not have been a terrible thing. Um, that's someone who came in as a walk on, and you know has has kind of fought his way up the depth chart. And I remember Urban Meyer calling him a hood ornament in 2017 because he, you know, he he could do some things, but he just he didn't do all the little stuff. He couldn't. He wasn't big enough to block. He had to really put on weight. Had to put on, put on muscle and and be ready to go. And Ohio State applied for a 60 year for him, and then the NCAA said, no, that no, that you are not the type of person that we need to have playing college football this year. Which, I mean, that's a choice. And the NCAA is full of choices, and they made another one. And <laughs> so, if you want to know what what Ryan Day thinks of C.J. Saunders. He's keeping C.J. Saunders around uh, around the program to, you know, work work as part of the program, you know, and, and he I think they were kind of trying to figure out what that role is going to be. But they want him they want him around. They value him as a uh, as a person and not just a player. And, and so, yeah, that that is just I mean, you know, that, that's probably about 473rd on my list of grievances with the NCAA at the moment. But that's, uh, you know, it's it's certainly on the list. And. C.J. Saunders probably deserved uh, deserved another year because he, I mean, was voted captain last year. He worked his way up from walk on to captain. Didn't get to play in 2019 because of a uh, a leg injury, and then now is now is not going to get to play again. And that just that just seems kind of unnecessarily crappy. Which you know that seems yeah pretty pretty much right up the NCAA's uh, alley. Yeah, and began his career as a corner back at Ohio State. Which is uh, one of the, one of the rare corner to receiver transitions for the Buckeyes, uh, Tom. Uh, hey, Tom, who are you having on tomorrow's Buckeye Buckeye uh, Morning Scoop show? Sorry, Tom, it's it's a yes. late late day for me. Yes, uh, tomorrow morning on the Morning Scoop, uh, the card just says Chief. I'm not sure what that's all about, but uh, we'll have we'll have someone on. We'll talk more about. Uh, we'll talk more about uh, you know everything we everything we heard from players, the captains. And, uh, you know, potentially for about the 17th time preview, hey, maybe this is the day the Big Ten releases its schedule. <laughs> could could be. Maybe maybe this is the day that uh, the Great Pumpkin comes. Maybe this is the day that Lucy holds the football there and Charlie Brown really gets to kick it. Maybe. Who know, Who's to say? Only one way to find out. Listen to the Morning Scoop. Just search that. Uh, search Buckeye Scoop on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spot, SoundCloud. You will find all of our great podcasts. We have some incredible shows. You know, we... You, you, you know about our show already, and we have uh, The Morning Scoop. That's our daily show. But Gives in the Bank is uh, Mark Givler and Bill the Bank Green. Just incredible insights on recruiting. Alex Gleitman uh, has his Around the Oval podcast, which is conversations with recruits and some other really interesting guests. But there are a million shows on there that are fantastic. We give our, a shout-out to our friends Sloopcast, who came over with us. Um, and, and so so many, many uh, good, just great shows Um all worth all worth checking out while you're there find one you like please give us a rating and review that helps uh, other people find these shows as well so leave us a five-star rating if you uh, enjoyed the show and if you didn't enjoy the show listen to the next one and then give us a five-star rating uh, kirk barton with scoop world order just talked to andy katz and Moria recently with a really good conversation tom what happens though as we record the morning scoop tuesday like so that it's done what happens if after we record the Big Ten, then Tuesday night releases the the football schedule? Um, I, I don't want to, you know, break the four. Well, we we started the show by breaking the fourth wall. We're going to yes. break it again. That would not be the first time that I have recorded the morning <laughs> show on Gun, and that's the end of this chapter. And then <laughs> then the the world changes again, and someone commits or some big piece of news breaks, and then I get to record the morning show again. So, uh, yes, just. Just for uh, in case you're wondering, we do not actually get up at four in the morning to record that. We record that the night before, but the uh, perils of that during a time when literally everything in the world is changing constantly. Uh, yeah, the perils of that are sometimes you get to do the morning show twice. And so <laughs> there you go. So maybe we'll, hopefully we'll get to do it once tomorrow, but maybe we'll get to do it twice. Who's to say? Who Who is to say? All right. Thank you all for joining, joining us 
and uh, we will talk to you guys later.